Okay, by popular demand, I've been asked to uh, do some more product and quotient rule examples for folks. So I'm just gonna spit off some functions and we're gonna find the derivative of those functions. I'll use a variety of notations. We'll see if we can get some product rule, some quotient rule, uh, maybe even some trig derivatives and, and some e to the x, some natural log, uh, and see if we can mix some things up. So let's start f of x equals uh, something basic. Let's go with x to the fourth times cosine x. So I see that I have two factors, so I'm gonna use the product rule. So f prime of x would be one d2 plus two d1. And for now, I'm just gonna leave that alone instead of rewriting it or simplifying. If it's a multiple choice question, I might have to match this up with whatever the answer is for a, b, c, or d. But for now, one times derivative of the second, one d2 plus two, the second vector, d1. Remember, I'm dividing this into two separate factors. Let's go ahead and look at g of x. If g of x equals, uh, we'll use e to the x over x cubed plus 2x. So I see I have one, one term divided by uh, another binomial here. And so I'm going to use the quotient rule. So g prime of x equals low d high, which is e to the x, low d high minus high, which is just e to the x, d low, 3x squared plus 2 over the square of what's below. And again, if I don't have to, I'm not going to simplify just yet. I may have to match something up here with a multiple choice example or use this for something. Maybe I need to find g prime of zero, in which case I would need to plug zeros in along the way. Uh, real quick, we can do that. I end up with zero times e to the zero minus e to the zero times zero plus two over, and this is going to be trouble, over zero squared. So this ends up actually being undefined as I can't divide by zero. Um, but if you notice, actually, the function g of zero, interestingly enough, would be e to the zero over zero, which is one over zero. So zero isn't even in my domain. X can't be equal to zero. So it doesn't even make sense for me to uh, put zero in here to my derivative. I could put one in, I could put three in, I could put 17 in, and I could get a value, an instantaneous rate of change or a slope of the tangent line at some X value here for this function G. Just want to avoid values that obviously aren't in the domain. Let's try another function H of X. Uh, let's make this one, uh, sine x times tangent x divided by x cubed. So now I can have both rules together. I have a product rule sort of inside a quotient rule that I'm going to need to apply to find h prime of x. But that's no big deal. It's just when I do the derivative of the top here, right, my d high, I'm going to just apply the product rule within my quotient rule. So let's start low, d high, and d high, since this is my d high here, the high and low, right, we're thinking about this as a high over low, I'm going to take the derivative of that using the product rule, so low d high, this is going to be a 1, d2, secant squared x, plus 2, tangent x, d1, which is cosine x. So back to my quotient rule, I have low d high minus high d low running off the page all over the square of what's below. And I could do some simplification here if I wanted to. I could I could maybe mess around with these trig functions a little bit. I could get rid of this, t you know, tangent is sine over cosine. I could get rid of a cosine here and make that just sine x. I could do some work here with this to simplify, but I'm just going to leave it alone for now. And, and just in case, I'm not sure how I would need to use h prime in this case. Um, so we'll kind of leave it at that. Let's go with another function. We'll use a different notation. We'll say y equals, uh, maybe y equals, 3x squared times natural log of x. And I'd like to find dy dx. We'll go across this time. Well, it's a product rule, right? 1 d2 plus 2 d1 6x. 
And this is a pretty easy simplification. I'll take care of this real quick. X squared over X divides out. So I have three X plus six X times ln X or natural log of X. And this is a pretty nice neat derivative. And again, uses the product rule with natural log. Uh, let's see, what if I have something that says Y equals, uh, and maybe we'll combine E to the X times cosine X over 3x times ln x. So this is kind of a bear because it's two product rules within a quotient rule. We'll attack this one. We're going to find y prime. We'll use y prime as our notation here for the derivative this time. And away we go. Low d high, which is 1 d2 plus 2. Oh, sorry. 2 d1 that's why you're in pencil i suppose so we have low d high which was a product rule minus high d low another product rule we have a 1 d2 plus 2 d1 in our d low so 1 d2 plus 2 d1 low d high minus high d low over the square of what's below. And I might get to do some simplification there, but for now I'm just gonna leave that as kind of a complicated example um, and just kind of let it alone. Where you might get into some trouble here, where this could throw you for a loop, is if you had a function f of x equals, I don't know, 3x cubed minus 4x all over x squared. A lot of people, when they first see this, for some reason, they want to bring this x squared up and make this some sort of like x to the negative second. I'm not a big fan of rewriting it that way. Instead, I'm going to rewrite this. Instead of just jumping in using the quotient rule automatically, I'm going to divide this into two fractions. I'm going to make this 3x cubed over x squared minus 4x over x squared. And I can do that because I have a single term in the denominator. That means that this is equal to 3x minus 4 over x. So f prime of x is equal to the derivative of this function. Well, let's see. The derivative of 3x is 3. I actually am going to rewrite this one more time as 3x minus 4x to the negative first power. So the derivative of 3x is 3, and the derivative of, derivative of negative 4 to the, times x to the negative first would be plus 4x to the negative second. So rewriting this without the negative exponent, I have 3 plus 4 over x squared. And you can actually, by rewriting this this way, you can avoid using the quotient rule and just go right to like kind of a double power rule. However, be careful. If g of x equaled the reciprocal of this, x squared over 3x cubed minus 4x, you would be locked into using the quotient rule here because you cannot cannot, I can't emphasize this enough, divide this into x squared over 3x cubed minus x squared over 4x. Think about if you were going to combine these fractions. You would need to find, multiply by some giant ones here to find a common denominator. You would not be able to work backwards to what you started with. This is bad news. Don't go that route. Instead, we're going to just use our quotient rule. So let's finish up and do this one. We have a quotient rule where g prime of x would be low, d high minus high d low over the square of what's below. And you can go bananas with, with simplification. Maybe you're asked again to find your g prime of something. Uh, we're going to leave this alone for now uh, and hope that we have something that we need to do that's, that's this is where this is going to be useful. If I were uh, asked to find g double prime of x, if that was kind of on the table here, I would definitely want to take this thing and simplify it as much as I possibly could prior to taking the second derivative. 
Because if I jump in and try to take the derivative of this monster, I'm gonna be here forever with multiple product rules inside a quotient rule with even a chain rule that you may or may not have even learned yet at this point uh, if you're watching this video. So just be careful, be aware. If you're gonna go to the second derivative, it's always a great idea to rewrite g prime into some simple form before trying to take the derivative again and find your second derivative.